My name is Dina Mountcastle, and 10 years ago today, my life, my perspective, changed forever. I was 32 years old, living the single life in New York City, and running late to work as usual. I had originally moved to New York in 99 as an aspiring stage actress, but soon realized I wasn't willing to live off ramen noodles and sacrifice the daily comforts of, for my art. So I decided to focus on my day job and started to make a career out of it. I was fortunate enough to land a job working for a small insurance brokerage firm in the financial district, just a couple blocks from the World Trade Center. Riding the subway to work that morning was no different than any other morning. My commute consisted of two trains, and I usually emerged out onto Fulton Street, kitty corner from the North Tower, and then headed east off to my building. As we exited the train that morning, we started heading up the steps towards the street. A normal morning commute consisted of lots of people, but moving in sync, rarely congested. But this morning, suddenly everyone on the stairs stopped. Our routine was interrupted, and our heads, which habitually faced down, slowly turned up to the ground above, basically to see what the holdup was all about. I was probably a bit irritated, to be honest. I mean, I was late for work anyway. Everything moved in slow motion from this point, People began moving slowly out of the train station up onto the street. I remember I was emerging out onto the street and a woman on my train was standing next to me. We both crept out onto the street and looked up to see this incredible fire billowing out of the middle of the building. We were all transfixed on this fire and also trying to stay under cover of the building as things seemed to be falling from the sky. This woman and I standing next to each other suddenly grabbed hands and looked up at the building, not really believing what we were seeing. People. People hanging out of the burning building waving some sort of white cloth. People. Falling. <laughs> People jumping. I squeezed this stranger's hand and gave her a look as if to say, what's happening? And then let go and started moving towards my building. I never saw her again. I only got about 30 feet when suddenly I heard a loud explosion sound. The ground shook and people I happened to be around there on the street corner all collectively let out a scream as we all lost our footing a bit. Only later did I find out that this was the second plane hitting the other tower. Grabbing a metal trash can to help me back up to my feet, looking to the sky for a plane dropping bombs, I ran as fast as I could the remaining distance to my building. Once in my office, we received sporadic information about what was happening, sporadic internet, sporadic cell service. I remember just wanting to call my mom. And miraculously, my first call to her went through, where I told her to turn on her television, and I let her know that I was okay so far. We knew finally they, that they were planes that had hit the buildings, not bombings. My coworker and I stood out in front of our building watching the burning towers. And I remember asking him, how are they gonna put out those fires? It's just way too high. And I remember asking him, who hates us this much? Never in a million years did we ever think that the towers would come down, never. I stood there praying for a friend of mine who had just started a job at Aeon trying to count the stories to see if I could get some sort of handle on where she was. I called her and called her on her cell, but no answer. And unfortunately, that was many people's story. 
My boss at the time advised me to go back, to go get on the train and go home. The train I take home was directly across from the South Tower. I grabbed my purse, but something inside me told me to stay. Something told me not to go back outside. I put my purse down and waited. About 15 minutes later, the building shook so hard we actually saw the aftershock ripple through the windows of our office. Everyone, about seven of us, fell to the floor. The sky had gone completely black. We thought a bomb had gone off either inside the building or in the building next to us. I panicked, I grabbed my things again, and I ran out of my office towards the stairwell of my building. As I opened the door, Smoke billowed out onto our floor, and I saw that there were people already in the stairwell. Firefighters and building maintenance people forced us back up onto our floors. They were saturated in this white powder, coughing and some throwing up. The smell was something I can still smell to this day if I think about it hard enough. It's not a smell I can even describe. We locked ourselves into our office at that point, as other people in their building were really panicking. And we wanted to just seclude ourselves and try to stay as calm as possible. It was then when we returned to our office that we learned that the towers had collapsed. I don't remember if it was by a phone call or an internet feed. I just remember us all looking at each other in wonderment, saying, gone. The towers are gone. Debris had blocked the entrance to our building, so we waited and listened for the sporadic news, not really knowing what to do next. After what seemed like forever, we were given the go-ahead to leave. We decided to leave as a group. My boss found some t-shirts there in the office. We ripped them up, rinsed them in water, and covered our faces, started to head out. It was difficult to breathe. Walking out onto the street was surreal. It was white, covered in this gray-white dust and quiet. All I could hear was the faint sounds of what sounded like car alarms in the distance. And I remember somebody approaching me with a cup of water, but nobody spoke. I can honestly say I have never felt more small and insignificant than I did in these moments. Everyone had their faces covered and our eyes were burning from the debris dust in the air. We all simply stayed close to one another and headed uptown towards the garage where my boss's car was parked. We passed by the hospital that was downtown and I saw medical personnel lined up waiting to help all the injured, but there weren't any. We were all just standing there. We got into the vehicle and it was clear things weren't moving very fast. We weren't getting very far. And from the information on the radio, once we got to a bridge, we could only go one way. We couldn't come back once we went over. I looked in the car and saw that there were two other Jersey people. I was the only Queens girl. So I said I'd get out and I would walk. I started making my way uptown. I remember walking and seeing people crying, handing out food, clothing, shoes, water, anything. It was like we all knew each other, like we all had this strong sense of familiarity with one another. When I finally arrived at my train station at 59th Street, I took a chance that maybe, just maybe, the trains were running again and I could get back to my apartment in Queens. I didn't know how to get over the bridge by foot, but I had made it this far, and if I had to, I was sure I could figure it out. There was no one around, no one. I made my way down the stairs, and as I approached the platform, my train, miraculously pulled up and the doors opened. It felt like a dream. I looked around, stepped onto the train, and sat down. 
The train went under the river, then popped up above ground in Queens. And once we passed Queensborough Plaza, the conductor stopped the train on its tracks as it made the turn into Queens. You could see directly downtown and the smoke was still billowing and he said over the loudspeaker, they're gone. The towers are really gone. And I just cried. All I knew once I got home is that I wanted to go right back down again. All I could think about was getting back down there to help. And to be honest with you, other people didn't really cross my mind very much before this. I was what we call in my house now, sort of a me monster, if you will. But what surfaced for me that day was this incredible sense to help. It was all consuming. Volunteer spots were hard to come by, but I was able to land a 1 to 4 a.m. shift for a couple nights at a food tent, feeding the rescue personnel who were down there searching for survivors, trying desperately to just find people. One of the strongest memories I have is all the people posting pictures of their lost loved ones, pleading for help in finding them pleading with tears in their eyes and fear in their hearts. We all thought that there would be people rescued, but there weren't. I used to think that I had to relive 9-11 every year to make sure I didn't forget it. I would make myself relive the day I experienced over and over and over, determined not to forget it. I think I felt guilty for surviving. Why not me? Why all these others? It wasn't until I spoke with my pastor last year that I realized all this made me feel was just horrifically sad, a heart-wrenching sadness that is so hard to describe. I had to search my heart to figure out what this day was going to be for me to reflect on what I was going to tell my children. Today is a day that I honor all those who lost their lives in this complete senseless act of hate. First responders, normal people, going to work, earning a living, riding the train just like me. It's my duty to remember them, to pay tribute to them, to honor them. They are who we will never forget. I heard recently on television as they interviewed the brother of someone who died that day. He said, heroes rarely die of old age. They die being heroes. And I never thought of it that way, but how very true that that is. What I choose to relive now is the humanity that I witnessed. I witnessed firsthand the act of humanity that came out of an act of terrorism. What better revenge for such hatred than the compassion shown to one another in New York and as an entire country that day? Instead of going back to the terror of that day, I try to go back to the humanity the faces of the people on the streets as I walk those 40 blocks or so, handing out water, shoes, food, anything, and not asking a single thing in exchange. People of all colors, races, backgrounds, suddenly united on one front. That's what I try to hold on to. That's what I want to teach my children. I lift up the hearts today of those changed by this. And I thank the Lord above every day for my life that I've been so graciously given. What a precious gift, my sweet Jesus. Thank you, and God bless. <laughs>